next guest. California high school product probably secretly wanted to go to USC because they're better football team, but chose UCLA, where he was known as an above average punt returner. Drafted by the Jacksonville Jags and held several team records, but let's be honest, the Jags haven't been around that long. He also played for the Oakland Raiders, but we don't talk about that season. What he lacks in height, he makes up for hot takes on running backs. Please welcome Maurice. Yes. He's in the house. What's going on? Good to see you, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. First of all, I mean, the amount of money you must have put up for this place is... It's worth it. Is it? Yeah. All right. But it's just a, <laughs> this is a rental. I didn't buy this. This is a oh, rental. Right. Okay. That's yeah, what you do when you have money. You rent. But, you get it? But, you know, the thing is, is I want to get back to this audience. They deserve this. They do. Yeah. So I want them to feel like they're here at the Super Bowl, even if you can't be here in the stands. They're at the Super Bowl, though. It's in Atlanta. Well, they're not at the Super Bowl. They're oh, in Atlanta. Think, yeah, right, 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 right. Yeah, the Super Bowl's not playing here. It, it, not, it I could. mean, I see the, I see the, <laughs> the field and everything. Uh, can you tell me what's going on with Todd Gurley's health? Since you do, yes. you, you do the Rams radio broadcast as well. So what happened with Gurley in New Orleans? And, um, and his available for the Super Bowl is what? Well, I, I think, first of all, when you talk about Todd and kind of the stuff that's going on, he just had a bad day. It had nothing to do with his health. But I, what is a bad day for a running back? What you saw, you know, just kind of not the timing, running the ball wasn't there, uh, even though he did score a touchdown. But, you know, just being wide open, dropping passes, he just he just wasn't, you know, I always tell, I try to go back to my playing days when you were talking about Jacksonville so kindly. Um, <laughs> we played the Baltimore Ravens on Monday night. As you know, we rarely got primetime games. So it was a big time for us that year. And uh, I fumbled four times or something. And so it was just sometimes you just – you just wake up on the wrong side of the bed and you have a bad day. And luckily his team was there to help him out. But Todd, I mean, you talk about coming off of, you know, the little knee issue and going in Dallas, having 14 carries, 120 yards. He's healthy. He's ready to go. He just had a bad day. And kudos to the Saints defense, who was ranked number two against the run. They did a great job stopping the run. So I think uh, it'll be a different challenge this week for him. And I think it'll be better. What do the Patriots do to Jared Goff? Uh, well, the one thing that they, they, they'll they try to do, they're going to try to disguise coverages. They're going to press their receivers at the line of scrimmage, try to – knock off their timing. But the other thing they're, they're going to do is they're going to do these stunts where they get their DN to loop in the middle and try to get pressure from the inside. And that's what they did against the Chargers or they did against the Chiefs. And it, it, it's the one type of pressure that no quarterback likes where you can get hit right up. You know, you're trying to throw down the in the pocket and someone's flying at you in your face. So uh, Jared Goff struggled with that against Detroit. He struggled with that against the, the, the Bears, I want to say, and the Eagles. And so I expect them to do the same thing. But I also look at what the Rams offer, and I've seen other teams in the playoffs have success with the Patriots, and that's getting pressure up the middle. Right. And if you get pressure up the middle, you can beat Tom Brady. No, you can beat anybody. But if you don't get pressure, right, then he's going to beat you. You know what? It's it's um I, I broke kind of broke the game down last week, and I'm gonna give it to you. I wasn't going to, but you're such a great guy. Let me write it. Do, yeah, should I write it down? Write it down. Okay. Are you ready for? You guys ready for this? All right, here you go. This is the game. All right. Plan. So this is this is important. The last two games, the Rams have started slowly, where they've either kicked a field goal on their first drive or went three and out. Uh, they can't do that. Okay. If you're going to play the Patriots, you have to score seven on the first two drives. You have to put up 14 quickly to get them out of this whole pound, run the ball, what they've been doing the last couple of weeks. I want to say last four or five weeks where they've been running Sony Michelle. So for the Rams, it's imperative. It's really important, significant to, to win this game. Those are big words that I'm trying to get you to understand, right? <laughs> Scoring on your first two possessions are going to be – it's going to change the game or not. Because if you look at the Chiefs game, it was, what, 14 nothing. If you look at the Chargers, it was 21-7. They're going to go down the field. They're going to eat up a lot of clock running the ball and dinking and dunking down the field. you got to make sure when you get the ball that you score and you kind of put pressure on them. Okay, it sounds easier. I mean, it, No question it, it, it sounds it, easier, but that's why – I mean, that's why I don't – that's why it's called the game. I don't play anymore. So do you think Belichick watching this show right now is writing down what you just said? I, I mean, you know, first of all, let's be honest. I, I know Sean McVay, so I should have a head coaching job soon. Um, <laughs> That's all it takes. I'm just telling you. Um, like I said hello to him at an Applebee. And really? I was wondering, yeah, and I got an offer to coach. That's what I'm year. saying. Yeah. Like, it's crazy, They were right? like, oh, my God, you know Sean McVay. I said, yeah, I, was, I said hello to him. Well, I mean, I'm assuming next year you know, I may be too busy to do this because I may be interviewing for jobs. I yeah. don't know. Okay. Would you give Tony Romo a head coaching job? 
based uh, off of how I'll he think, broadcast he, a game? Um, well, it, to me, he's more he's talking more about offense than he is defense. Um, and, and wouldn't you make him a defensive coordinator if he knows everything? That's what I. That's what I would think. You'd make him a D coordinator, not a head coach. A head coach has to kind of deal with egos, and I, he's probably done that because he's he's worked with To and a bunch of other guys, Dez and things like that. But um, it's just different being a head coach. You got to kind of really be groomed to do that. He'd be crazy to leave the broadcast booth to become a coach. Yeah, it'd be. It'd be I would do it. No, he's. There's no wins and losses on Monday. He feels pretty good when he Every, gets out of bed. You're always right. Yeah. No matter what you say, you could be dead wrong. You're always right. Yeah. That's why when I heard that, I'm going, no. Oh, what? He said he was going to coach? No. People say, oh, God, he's got a coach. Oh, no. and, you know, I go, I no, 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 no. Just I because you it. can predict what's yeah. going to happen in like, a play. What's the deal with this chair? It keeps, what? like, sliding. Which? Is everything all right? Or is it just me? Maybe it's you. Maybe. Maybe. I, was, I, was I mean, worried. I didn't want to. I was like, I, was like, I don't know what's going on. I, I didn't want to. Weird. Are your feet touching the yes, ground? Yes, they are touching the ground. Okay. Right. I'm just, I'm just curious. It's not that. It's not. But I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I can have that replaced. I was going to say, all this money you spend around here, you have this chair that like makes me slide forward. I didn't. <laughs> that's a hot seat that you're on. Like it's meant to be uncomfortable. Oh, is it? Yeah. Although that's okay. Well, I'm comfortable, but I'm just saying. Uh, let me see. You're uh, joining us on behalf of the NFL Network Super yes. Bowl coverage, and that'll be on Sunday. You can see Maurice Jones-Drew. It's an eight-and-a-half-hour pregame show, Mojo. It is. It is. It's the first time doing it. So I'm a little nervous for the big game. Right, Do so. you have your suit ready? I guess. Well, because, you know, I have to go for Are you dressed right now to go to the pregame show? No, not at all. Because it starts, at like, uh, in about seven minutes, I think. It feels like. No. It starts on Sunday. Oh, Sunday. Oh, yeah, like, okay. you know, the game Sunday. Oh, oh it's only eight about. and a half hours. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was like 58 hours, you know, you were no, going to no, do it. No. 9 a.m. Eastern on the NFL Network. Have you had a moment where you went, I shouldn't have said that on the air? A bunch of times. <laughs> oh, I just, I just, well, it's not, I only think it's that I shouldn't say it. It's just like, what did I say? Right? Like, because we only have so many seconds for you all that are here. TV is all about timing, as we know. Um, and so there's certain times with the network I'll have like five minutes to say something, a minute and a half. When you're calling games, you only have 15 seconds. So you have to kind of formulate an uh, idea or a comment and be able to spit it out about the game and then make sure that it sounds somewhat reasonable. intelligible. Yeah. yeah. He's Maurice Jones Drew. It's always great to see you. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.